I want to give today additional tips regarding graft in geography. I strongly suggest you review my talks of graft engagements from 2022 and 2021, as well as my graft PCI talk. This is a quick diagram reminder of graft anatomy. From down to up and from right to left, you have vein graft to RCA, then vein graft to diagonal LED, and vein graft to OM. Therefore, we use LAO to engage a graft to the right and REO to engage a graft to the left. A graft to the right is down pointing and require a down pointing catheter whereas a graft to the left tend to be upward pointing and require upward pointing catheters. Lately, I've been doing most of my graft in geographic cases from a left radial axis. The first artery I engage is the lima, so I go in with a BC catheter that is sharply angled. I go into the proximal subclavian, then I hook the lima on the way back which elongates the catheter and makes it hook the lima. Usually I do a slight a clockwise torque from a left radial that is usually successful, whereas from a groan, we usually need a slight counterclock torque. Keep in mind that the lima is between the vertebral and the thyrocervical trunk, especially close to the thyrocervical trunk, which is looking up, whereas the lima is looking down close to the very same level. Then after I engage the lima, I go into the ascending aorta, I engage and image the native coronaries, then I image the grafts. For the graft to the RCA, I find that from left radial, the RCB catheter is more successful than multipurpose catheter, usually with a counterclock torque. And for the graft to the left, I use any of those three. Usually I start with a JR catheter. Then if this fails, I use LCB or AL. Usually amplets left one for diagnostic and amplets left one or two for interventions. And keep in mind for interventions where I need a lot of support for a graft to the left, I may use amplets left one and if it is not abutting the aorta, or even in amplet left two, if it is not abutting the aorta, I add a guideliner to it to create a perfectly shaped, perfectly supportive large AL abutting the opposite aorta. Guideliner converts a poorly engaged, unstable guide into a perfect large amplet left abutting the opposite aorta. This is an illustration of a case where I use amplets left one and I added a guideliner to create a perfectly supportive amplets left shape. Some additional tips regarding markers. In patients who don't have a prior in geography, I always look at chest x-ray before my case. And on that zoomed chest x-ray image, I look for markers. This helps me plan my procedure. And you can see here, there are two small markers. And regarding markers, there are two big types of markers. The better ones are those, the circle type of markers, which surround the ostium of the vein graft. Those are the best because they tell you exactly where the graft is and you need to make your catheter penetrate inside the circle, inside that marker to engage the graft. And you can use a view that is orthogonal to that marker that makes the marker look almost like a line and you make your catheter point inside that line. And the circle markers could be those beautiful circle markers or the less beautiful one like these ones here. So the graft is surrounded by those markers. There is a second type of marker that is not as good those are the small circle markers. Those are not placed around the graft. Those are placed at the same level 
of the graft in the neighborhood of the graft. So they don't tell you where the graft is exactly. They tell you where is the vertical level of the graft. You know that the graft is around this level, but you have to sweep circumferentially that whole level to find the graft in difficult cases. Look here, this is the marker and this is the graft ostium. So the marker is in the neighborhood, not surrounding the ostium. I will move on to the main part of the talk and I will give you tips about how to image and proceed with the graft case in geography. This is a 59 year old man. He has a multiple prior stent to the right and OM and he has four vessel cabbage, Lima to diagonal, vein graft to LAD, vein graft to OM1, vein graft to OM2. And this is his angiogram starting with the native angiography. This is an REO caudal view. And look carefully, you already know whether the vein grafts are patent or not just by looking at this angiogram. You see three tented areas on this angiogram. You see here the LED on top that goes down toward the apex. And you can already see that that LED has a tenting. It has a lift here. This is where the vein graft to the LED is attached. Same thing on that OM here. You see there is a lift on that OM. This is where the vein graft is attached. And if you look carefully, there is another area here that's coming, another OM branch. And it also has a lift has a lift off and on with a competitive flow. So here is what we have here. We have a tenting of the LED with no competitive flow. So the vein graft to the LED is attached here and it's occluded. You have a tenting in this OM here with no competitive flow. So you have a vein graft to OM2 here that is attached here and that's occluded. And you have tenting of this OM here with a robust competitive flow. So there is a vein graft attached here that is patent. So you already mapped out the vein graft. Vein graft to LAD is occluded. Vein graft to OM2 is occluded. And what they called as vein graft to OM1 is patent. And this is important because that will help guide how much effort you should put into engaging grafts when you don't have markers. You already know the status of those grafts, so you don't need to make dramatic efforts fishing for those grafts. And this is a graft to the OM1. You can see how it's patent. And here we engage the graft to OM2 using an amplitude left, and you can see the stump, which looks like a nipple, proving that it's occluded. We could not engage the vein graft to LED, but it's clearly occluded based on the native angiogram. We also did non-selective aortic angiography in ARIO, which showed that there is no other patent graft. And this is the Lima to diagonal, which is a larger vessel runoff than the LED. And that's probably why the surgeon attached the lima to the diagonal and placed the vein graft to the flimsy distal LED, which didn't hold and occluded. There are three key tips in graft cases in geography that I want you to get out of this talk. One, when you analyze the native coronary angiogram, watch for competitive flow. If you see competitive flow in a branch, this indirectly indicates that there is a graft to that branch and the graft is patent. Now it may be severely diseased, but it's patent. It's not 100% occluded. However, a lack of competitive flow on the native in geography does not mean that the graft is occluded. For example, look at here. If you know that the patient has a graft to a certain OM, and on the native in geography, those OMs are filling integrally with no competitive flow. That doesn't mean that the graft to OM is occluded because the graft could be attached to another OM that is completely disconnected from your native system. 
So a lack of competitive flow in this OM and that OM does not mean that the graph to the OM is occluded. It could be hooked to another OM that is disconnected from your system. Another major idea that I want you to know is that if a native artery or branch has an upward lift or tenting, this means that a vein graft is attached to that branch. And if you see no competitive flow or retrograde filling past that hook, that means the vein graft is occluded. If you see competitive flow or retrograde filling into the graft, then that graft is likely patent. The third major idea I want you to know is on your native or graft in geography, if there are collaterals to a large branch, and if you believe this branch is grafted, then that graft is occluded. Conversely, if you have a large territory that has no flow, or if you have what seems to be a large missing branch with no collateral filling on the native and other graft injection, then the graft to that territory or to that branch is likely patent. So you see no collateral flow to that area on native and other graft injections. Well, that likely implies that the graft to that territory or that branch is likely patent. Otherwise, you would have seen collateral filling. Two additional ideas regarding how you analyze your graft in geography. One, analyze the integrate, but also the retrograde filling via the vein graft. A graft fills the bypass artery integrately, but also retrogradely, all the way to the point of occlusion or subtotal occlusion. Number two, superimpose the native in geography and the graft anatomy in geography to understand the perfusion of each one of the three major coronary territories. So map the global coronary perfusion. For example, in this patient, if you have a patent lima to LAD that is filling integrally to the apex and retrogradely all the way to the point of occlusion, it's filling a few diagonals and septals retrogradely, but it's not filling all the way back to the ostial LAD and you have severe left main proximal LAD disease before a big diagonal and septal, then there is ischemia in those diagonal and septals, and you may need to stent the native LAD left main to improve flow to those LAD and septal. Or in this patient, for example, who has a graft to the OM2 that is patent, but that OM2 is disconnected from the native circumflex. So that graft is not feeding OM1 and OM3. And if you have a severe native left circumflex stenosis, you may open it to improve flow to the OM3 if that OM3 is a large territory. Or here you have a patent vein graft to the PDA, but that PDA has retrogradely 90% stenosis. So that vein graft is not filling the PLBs, and if you have large PLBs and the native right has an 80% stenosis, then you may recanalize that native right to improve the PLB flow. Often the reports of graft cases are very confusing, but I think you should report them in terms of territory. First, comment on the graft, whether they are patent or occluded, then dissect the case in terms of territory. Number one, LED territory in this patient. Lima is patent and fills the LED integrally to the apex and retrogradely to the mid LED and D2. Proximal LED territory and D1 fill via the native vessel and are impeded by 90% proximal LED stenosis. Number two, left circumflex. OM1 is occluded and is not grafted, so this territory is ischemic. OM2 vein graft, OM2 is patent, but does not fill retrogradely the circumflex, which has an 80% stenosis before a big OM3. 
Number three, the RCA. The RCA has a vein graft to PDA that is patent. It fills integrally and retrogradely the PDA. However, it's not feeding the PLB branches. The native RCA is feeding those PLB branches and it has an 80% stenosis. That's how we should report this case. And this is how we reported the case I showed you a little earlier. We reported it in terms of territory. For example, for the circumflex territory, the left circumflex is patent with unobstructed flow to a large OM2. The graft OM2 is occluded, but we don't need it because the native vessel has unobstructed flow. There is a patent graft to OM1, so there is unobstructed flow overall to the SARC system, to OM1 and OM2. In sum, the only territory with obstructed flow is the distal LED, which is not a good target for PCI or cabbage. This is another case. This patient has Lima to LED and vein graft to OM. You can already see on the native injection that there is stenting of that OM and therefore it is likely that the vein graft is hooked here and it is occluded because there is no competitive flow in that OM. And we may have to fix the native stenosis here to improve flow and ischemia in that OM. Now, even if you did not have that lift, that tenting here, you can tell that the graft OM is probably occluded by the fact that you have two large OMs here that are supplying what seems to be all that posterolateral territory. It's hard to imagine another big OM in that area. So the vein graft OM is likely coming to one of those OMs, yet neither one of them has competitive flow. Therefore, it is likely that the vein graft OM is occluded. Again, this thought process helps guide you as you're trying to fish for the vein graft OM, especially if you're encountering difficulty finding and engaging the vein graft OM. And this is in an RAO cranial. Again, you can see here the lift on that OM2. This is another case. This is a patient who has a vein graft to a right posterolateral branch. Looking at this native angiogram, is the vein graft patent or not? Note that on the left coronary injection and on the other graft injections, we don't see any collateral filling. One may look at this and say, well, the native posterolateral branches here are filling with no competitive flow. So the vein graft to PLB may be occluded. However, there is a large area here that is missing perfusion. So you have to imagine that there is a probably another major branch here that is bypassed. So don't assume that because those are filling, the vein graft is occluded. Most likely there is a posterolateral branch coming off from here that is disconnected from the native system because it has an osteal 100% occlusion. Especially that you see what I call a ghost town, an area with no perfusion. And in fact, since I see that there is here an area with no perfusion with a probably a disconnected PLB, and since I don't see any collateral filling from the left coronary angiogram and other graft angiograms, then it's probably actually that that vein graft to PLB is patent. Otherwise, I would have seen some collateral filling somewhere. And indeed, we kept fishing for that graft and we found it. We found it on the anterior left surface of the aorta in an RAO view, as if it was a left graft. So the surgeon placed that graft on the left side of the aorta as if it was connected to a left graft, like a left PLB. But having this hint on our basic angiographic assessment allowed us to be more insistent on finding the graft. This is another case. This is a 65-year-old man with five-vessel cabbage in 2002. He had a coronary angiogram in 2009 showing that the native LED and RCA are occluded proximally 
and it showed per report that the Lima to LED is occluded and vein graft to diagonal is patent, a graft to ramus is patent, a graft to OM is occluded, and graft to right PLB is patent. He's having now severe exertional angina. This is his native left coronary angiogram. So the LED is occluded osteally, and you can see two OMs here. Since this patient has a ramus branch that is grafted and disconnected from this system, you can imagine that the OM that is grafted must be one of those two. And since it has no competitive flow, then it's probably that the graft is occluded. And that is consistent with the report from 2009. Note that this is probably the grafted OM. It doesn't have a lift, but you don't always have a lift. When you have it, it's great, it helps, but you don't always have that. And we engage here a graft to an artery in an RAO view. This is a graft to a left coronary artery, likely a diagonal on top of the heart border. It seems like a bifurcating diagonal. And there is severe disease at the anastomosis. And this is another view of this graft. This is a cranial view of this graft. And you can see that toward the end, it's not just filling the diagonal, it's filling the diagonal here, it's filling another diagonal here, but it's also filling the LAD. If you see some competitive filling with the LAD here, okay? And this is another view of it, a cranial view, LAO cranial. And you can see that graft filling the diagonal and filling retrogradely the other diagonal, but also importantly, filling the LAD via competitive flow here. You can see the LAD coming via competitive flow. And this is another view of that vein graft to diagonal, filling retrogradely another diagonal, and the LED with competitive flow. What does this competitive flow in the LED tell you? It tells you that either the native LED is patent, but that's not the case. We know the native LED is occluded, or there must be something feeding that LED. Maybe another graft feeding the LED. Maybe the graft to ramus is connected to the LED and is feeding the LED and it's competing with the vein graft to diagonal. Or maybe there is a Lima to LED. So we assumed since the Lima to LED is reportedly occluded, we assume that maybe it's the vein graft to ramus that is feeding that LED retrogradely and creating the competitive flow. One could think that maybe because of the tight anastomotic disease, that vein graft is not able to fill the LED well, and that originally, if there was no disease here, it would have filled the LED fully without competitive flow. That's unlikely to be the case. There must be something else feeding the LED and creating competitive flow, because if that's all the LED was getting and it's not filling properly on that injection, well, the patient would be having a STEMI or would be having ongoing severe ischemia. Also, the appearance is that of competitive flow where contrast flows in and gets quickly diluted out. This is not the appearance of poor LED flow. In case of poor LED flow, you would get slow contrast filling of that LED and slow contrast clearing, almost like a contrast hanging in that LED and slowly clearing. So we engage the graph to the ramus but the graft to the ramus is disconnected from the native system. It has 100% ostial occlusion. It's not feeding the LED. And you can see here the graft to the ramus. This injection shows you both the graft to the ramus on top and the graft to diagonal on bottom. So that graft to the ramus is not feeding the LED. There must be a lima to LED. So we decided to throw away that old report it's probably a wrong report. And even though this case was done from a right radial axis, we decided to engage the lima. And from a right radial, the way we do it, we engage the left subclavian with a JL4 catheter. Then we use a soft 
angled glide wire that we advanced deep in the arm and we inflated the blood pressure cuff in the left arm to grab that glide wire. And with the blood pressure cuff inflated, we advanced a soft catheter, a glide cath into that subclavian. So we advanced a soft wire deep, then a soft catheter over it. Then after that, we can exchange for a stiffer wire, like a Rosen wire. Then we can exchange for a stiffer catheter, like a five French IM catheter. In this case, we chose to just do our angiogram with the four French glide cath, which we were able to use to engage the lima. And here we can see the injection of the lima. And indeed, the lima to LED is patent. It has moderate anastomotic disease, but it is widely patent, unlike the prior report, and it's filling integrally the LED. And you can see here, it has moderate anastomotic disease, but the graft is widely patent. And that anastomotic disease, we call it about 50%, and it's not hemodynamically significant based on SPECT imaging. So you can see from this case how important it was to analyze the small hints on the angiogram. Those allowed us to not trust the old report. And in general, in those cases, it's important to get old angiographic reports if the patient had a prior angiogram, but it's also more important to try to look at the images if possible, because incorrect reporting and assuming a graft is occluded when the graft was never engaged is quite common, unfortunately, in those cases. In this patient, we eventually treated the vein graft to diagonal anastomosis. We double wired the diagonal antegradely and retrogradely all the way back into the LAD. Then we used a provisional bifurcation stenting across the anastomosis. We dilated integrally the uh, smaller diagonal branch and we stented retrogradely into the larger territory. Then we did pot proximally. And we got a very good result across the anastomosis while preserving flow into the smaller integrate diagonal branch. And you can see that the LED now feels better, but it still has competitive flow with quick contrast clearing after filling.